Aloha, my internet family. Hello. How are you? I posted on Twitter a couple of days ago that I'd found a simple process for hollowing out a solid object that's intended to be printed spiral face using only Prusa Slicer so that it could be printed on an SLA or an MSLA printer. So I thought I'd jump on the computer, jump over into Prusa Slicer and show you how this works really quick. I think you'll be surprised. It's very simple. Let's do this. Okay, so obviously the first thing that you need to do is have a spiral face model or a model, a solid model that you want to uh, generate a spiral base from. Um, just for illustration purposes, I found this one on prusaprinters.org called Spiral Base by WF3D. Went ahead and downloaded it, and we're just going to take that, drag and drop it into Prusa Slicer. Now in Prusa Slicer, I already have an SL1 defined and converted over to the size format of my Peel Poly Phenom Noir. So we're going to start with that, but you can create a profile for whatever SLA printer you have so that it matches your build volume to make it easier. Now, because this is taller at the top, what I'm going to do to make this easier is I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and put the upside down. We're going to go ahead and hollow it. We're going to hit hollow object. I'm going to use a wall th thickness of three millimeters. You can go thinner if your printer can handle it. Um, keep in mind this will create a lot of peel force. You know, you're basically printing uh, almost near a suction cup. So you're going to want to do that. And I'm going to take and put a single hole. Um, I'm going to make it just about 10 millimeters. It doesn't have to be exact. We're going to rotate this so it can go here and boom, right there. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at hollowing the model. We'll let it do its thing and we'll take a look and see how that works. Now, this is how you would hollow a model normally at this point for printing uh, on SL SLA or MSLA. We're, right now, we just did a simple hollowing. Uh, obviously, we would have added more holes. In this case, we're just going to add the one, and I'll show you why uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so now we have it hollowized, and we just have an empty hollow container. So what we're going to do is go back over to our 3D editor mode. We're going to right click on it. We're going to do export as an STL. I'm going to give it the name of spiral base hollow save. We're going to clear our build plate. Yes. We're going to bring that new hollowed model back in. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the cut tool. Now, the reason that I had you flip it is if you can see the Z on the cut, it starts off at zero and goes up. Uh, it saves you just a tiny bit of math. You don't have to do that, but it saves you a little bit of math because you can just set that to three millimeters, tell it to keep the upper part, rotate lower part upwards, perform cut, it's going to slice off that three millimeter model. Um, we're just going to rotate this back the way that we wanted it. And now we have it hollowed out. You can now right click again. Do export as STL. Call it spiral base hollow cut. 
and you can now bring that into Cheat2Box or whatever slicer program uh, your machine needs, or even in Prusa Slicer if you're using that. Um, and you can now slice it for your machine, and you've got a vase. Uh, you can see this particular model had some some errors on it there. Uh, we might have even been able to clean that up just with a slight more 177 so let's go to 176 keep lower part if you got a little little bit of a back cut there we go it was catching just a little bit of that before so now we could re-export it Export as STL. Firebase follow cut. Save it. Replace it. And you are done. So I hope that explains it uh, simple for you. Again, you can change your wall thickness on the hollow depending on the capabilities of your printer. With the Phenom, I don't like to go any smaller than a three millimeter wall on something this large because you're going to have a lot of peel force. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you elevate it and put the supports underneath it so that the hole that we drilled uh, is able to let the, let the air out and you're not creating a giant suction cup. But that's about it. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.